Hi and welcome to the video. This is the second episode of Underrated Songs. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the song Kismat Se Tum Humko Mile Ho. This is from the movie Pukar. Music is by R. Rahman and the singers are Sonu Nigam and Anuradha Padwal. But before we start, as usual, please watch the entire video. If you like it, leave a like. If you want to tell me anything, put that in the comment section down below. Check out other stuff on the channel and if you like any of that, please consider subscribing. Let's get right into the review. If you noticed, I did not mention the name of the lyricist in the beginning. And that is because wherever I searched, I found two names instead of one. So it was credited to Majru Sultanpuri or Javed Akhtar. There's a confusion. It says Majru Sultanpuri slash Javed Akhtar. Maybe that's for the entire film. But I could not find specifically who wrote this song. But I think I know based on the lyrics. I think Majru Sahib did this because you can find a lot of words like Balam and Preet and Janam. So for many people who don't know this, it was Majru Sultanpuri who used to bring a lot of this folk uh, language elements, uh, rural elements into mainstream Hindi songs. And also since he was a great Urdu poet, he used to put those words here as well. Uh, whereas Javed Saab also knows Urdu and is a Urdu poet as well. But the thing is, he's very urban in his language and this folk uh, kind of touch or Lok Geet Kavirsa as we say. Uh, is more of Majru Saab's stamp. So I think the lyrics are by Majru Sultan Puri here. Uh, and he has done a fabulous job. I mean, who are we to even comment on that? The whole situation of the song is encapsulated very well in the song. The song is about the hero realizing that he's in love with this woman uh, who's being selfless towards him and uh, he finally realizes it. So if you carefully listen to the lyrics, you have lines like Teri Kadar Na Jani and all that. So uh, it's very well done and it fits like a glove in the whole narrative of the film. Now let's get to the singing. Let's get to Anuradha Padwal first. So ever since we were a kid and we listened to this song, me and my friends used to fight about whether the decision to make her sing so high was correct. We still haven't gotten an answer by the way. There's a line at the end of the first antra where she uh, like goes and like belts into this uh, like really high note and you can hear her strain. Uh, we even argued that whether if it is a false voice like a falsetto or a head voice as they call it in Western music or is it her natural voice but either ways she struggles real hard to hit that note but in the rest of the song she is absolutely beautiful, expresses a lot. Uh, the only exposure I had uh, of Anuradha Podwal be before this song came in uh, were all the T-series films and all the uh, bhajan records, right? Uh, that again, which were done by T-series. So this, when I heard, first of all, I didn't realize as a kid that this was Anuradha Podwal. But as the years passed on, uh, like it's a great song and she has done a great, great vocal performance here. Now let's get to Sonu Nigam. So what do we say again? It's as difficult for me to describe Sonu Nigam's vocal performance as it is for me to describe Shreya's. So they are almost perfect. They're near perfect. That's why it's so difficult. But let's try. So Sonu here has done a great job in terms of balancing between the film aspect of giving feel to a song, expression to a song. But since this song is based on a rag, We'll come to that later. Since this song is based on a rag and has a lot of Indian classical elements, there are places, especially towards the end of the song, where he just lets that classical twang come in and it was a great choice and he has done it beautifully. Uh, Sonu doesn't have to shriek that much to hit that high note because I think he's singing in a slightly different key. So he doesn't have to reach that far. Uh, it fits very well in his voice and the melody at that portion is also slightly different from what Anuradha Podwal sings. So overall Sonu Nigam also does a great job and we also have to remember that Sonu was in his early days in his career during this. So I think if the film came out in 2000 it must definitely have been recorded in 99 or something. So he was just like 5-6 years in and he was doing great stuff even at that time. No wonder he went on to be this huge, huge legend that we all respect and adore. All said and done, the star of this show is A.R. Uh, so let's get into the composition. 
So this song is being composed in the rag uh, known as Bhim Parasi. For my South Indian friends, uh, it's closer to the rag Abheri in Carnatic music, though I think it's not exactly the same. Uh, and big disclaimer, I'm not a huge uh, Carnatic music or Indian music nerd in general, so I had to research this bit. Uh, for me, who plays piano and keyboards and stuff, it sounded similar to the minor pentatonic scale in ascending, but slightly different while descending. This song also is a great example of composer taking a rag or a scale in general and playing with the entire range. So this song, if I'm not wrong, pans almost across two to two and a half octaves. Uh, so the singers have to do a lot. And as we have already talked about it, they kind of lived up to the challenge and they have done a great job but the composer trusted his singers to go that far and compose phrases from like the lower octave to two octaves higher i guess especially for uh, the female singer so that's a great job and we don't get to hear these two two and a half octave songs uh, nowadays and in the older days i guess when Rafi Saab used to sing it was pretty normal Nowadays, this is a bit rare to come by. Now let's talk about the production. The song starts with a kind of female vocal humming. This element is introduced very... The song starts with this female choir humming type of thing. This element is introduced right in the first two, three seconds of the song. And it continues throughout the length of the song. Then the singer starts singing. Uh, but there's no like a drum group. It's all with side percussion and light percussion it moves on uh, then you have the first antra the groove slightly intensifies and this is how an arrangement should keep on building and this is a very fine example of great great arrangement then we go into the mukhra the second time and this is where we actually hear a groove and we hear all the tabla elements over there then again back to the second antra and the second interlude and then back to the mukhra for the last time and the groove keeps intensifying also if you hear very keenly and i had to hear this on an audio platform and not on youtube to notice this there are some mridangam parts as well in the antra layers but they are buried very deep within so it's barely audible but if you listen real hard you can find them uh, there are some flute parts which are just amazing but they are used as underlining in the interlude they don't uh, feature very prominently anywhere the female choir part keeps on recurring but in each time in each recurrence it's different initially it's humming uh, then you have the R ah and O oh kind of sounds uh, they're doing then they do a sargam and very interestingly in this sargam they are kind of battling or dueling with strings. Uh, so the same phrase goes on the strings and then they are singing the same phrase in the circle. That's a very clever way of making two genres fit like a glove and glue the entire song together. Uh, a lot of detail has been done with small percussion. Uh, there are two elements which I think are completely programmed and they weren't live at all. Uh, one is this clap sound that keeps on coming here and there. And the other one is this arpeggiated synth kind of parts. They feature in the second half of the song, but they are used as transitions. So there's no big string fill to transition from one section to other. It's done using these small tiny elements, but it's so seamless and it's absolutely pretty and adds a lot, adds a lot to the song. So overall, a fantastically produced song, uh, very, very well sung a really uh, ingenious composition but uh, why i'm adding this in this underrated section is because when the film came out k sera sera was a big hit right and sunta hai mera khuda was promoted a lot i remember there was a time when you couldn't switch on the tv without sunta hai mera khuda playing but songs like this or even ek tu hi bharosa never got the attention that they deserved at least Ektui Bharosa got the attention it deserved later because of Lata Mangeshkar featuring in the video and Rahman actually playing the piano parts in that song. But songs like this never get the attention. So I felt this is one of those hidden underrated gems. So I thought I'll share this with you guys. 
so that's it for the review if you have watched it till the very end thanks a lot please leave a like uh, if you want to tell me anything put that in the comment section down below uh, check out other stuff i do a lot of music reviews check them out if you like any of that please please consider subscribing i need all your love and support thank you